All right. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to this AMA. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, so this event is um, one part of the um, uh, a project called Treasure. Uh, it's funded by um, Horizon 2020. And Treasure is one of those clever acronyms. It stands for Transition of the European Automotive Supply Chain Towards a Circular Future. And the vision of the project is to provide empirical and analytical insight to support the transition of the automotive sector towards circular economy. Um, essentially, we're trying to fill in, identify and fill in information gaps among automotive actors at different stages, starting from the design stage and to the end of life stage. Uh, so this project is still in progress, although we're entering uh, the final stage. Um, and while the consortium behind the project is broad and varied, so we have 15 partners over seven different countries um, coming at the research problems from very different disciplinary backgrounds and with different methods, um, our role, so the edge writer's role, uh, we are an es essentially a, a geographically distributed think tank that provides methodological support to large scale projects like these uh, is to gather data and produce actionable insight through ethnographic methods. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of ethnography at all, or who might've heard the word, um, but you're not sure exactly what it means, um, the ethnographic method is a social science method that is associated primarily, uh, though not exclusively, with the discipline of um, cultural anthropology. And it is deployed to reveal how cultural meaning is formed, experienced, and reproduced from the perspective of uh, communities under study. Uh, basically, it's a qualitative research uh, technique that's uh, designed to discover how groups or communities of humans uh, perceive and experience sets of issues. So ethnographers study individuals as social members of communities or networks, uh, analyzing how people with unique worldviews and life experiences um, live and work and make meaning together. Um, ethnography is uh, especially valuable because its findings uh, can make invisible um, concepts and worldviews of groups visible. So ethnography tries to find novel social, cultural, economic, and political um, understandings and kind of maps of meaning that arise organically from human interactions rather than imposing uh, researchers' um, preconceived categories of analysis. So ethnography is fundamentally inductive rather than deductive. Um, more practically, ethnographic data collection happens in uh, different ways. Uh, one method that we have consistently used in this project has been something called event ethnography, where large scale events uh, that are organized um, around themes or topics of interest to particular um, self-selecting communities of experts or professionals or otherwise stakeholders are used as these kind of opportunistic tools for ethnographic interviews. So we have spent the last couple of years um, going around to, on the one hand, car events, on the other hand, sustainability and uh, circularity themed events and interviewing people there about this intersection between kind of... Um, the concept of cars and uh, automobiles and the concept of sustainability and circularity. Um, but ethnographic research can also kind of be more proactive in terms of uh, generating circumstances that elicit uh, engagement between people and conversations in which themes and insights can emerge. So there's a number of ways in which we create events like that on our online platform. Um, including coming up with prompts for community discussion, um, contests for creative fiction uh, on the themes of circularity and the automotive industry that are designed to um, generate exchanges and feedback. Um, and also different events with experts, um, such as this one, where um, through the question and answer component, in this case, the AMA format, the shape that knowledge transfer takes tells us something valuable about the topics that are on people's minds um, and what are the burning issues that they want to raise and discuss? What are the questions they want to know uh, the answers to? Because ultimately, 
what lies within the contour of a question is very valuable for us ethnographers because we see um, questions people ask um, within a community as this kind of lens or insight into their beliefs, values, priorities, anxieties, hopes, aspirations, uh, and knowledge systems. So by understanding recurring themes and concerns that emerge in what questions people ask, ethnographers can gain a deeper understanding of um, how a given community uh, perceives itself and the issue under study in a broader cultural context. Uh, so that was uh, kind of the design between um, this event. And uh, now, uh, without uh, further ado, um, I'm going to uh, turn over the Zoom floor uh, to our speaker, uh, Jean de Nicot, who is a leading figure in circular economy, strategic materials, and life cycle assessment at the Renault Group, uh, which is, a, of course, a major car maker in France that has been adopting and integrating the concept of circular economy into its automotive business model and research and development for, I believe, over 15 years now. So, uh, Jean-Denis, I'm- um, uh, Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nika. So, I'll just share my screen. And here we go. No, oh, sorry. So yes, indeed. So we are now, uh, this will be about uh, 30 minutes uh, of presentation and then we can have, uh, I think around, I guess, 45 minutes of Q&A session. So I'll be introducing um, how, well, first of all, the principles of, of circular economy, how they can apply to the, to the car industry and then practically how we are uh, applying them uh, well in, in, throughout our, our different activities at Renault Group. So first of all, uh, the principle themselves, uh, you, you probably know the, the waste hierarchy, which consists of uh, the series of principles in a hierarchy starting in the top from uh, preventing well, waste, how, yeah, preventing uh, the generation of waste and reusing, recycling, well, and finally uh, recovering uh, and, and our one feeling, which is uh, out of the, the waste hierarchy. And um, so how, how does it apply to the, the car industry? First, in the avoidance part, we can have the, the reduction of raw material usage through the the right sizing, the light weighing, the waste reduction in production of the vehicles, but then we'll see there are other ways in the, the business model itself that can contribute to a raw material reduction. But this is just for the, the design and, and production part. Then, uh, well, I, of course, this is uh, what you can see here is obviously the traditional linear model. And then we have, we apply the, the circular principle on top of it, started for, starting from the basis of the pyramid, uh, which is the, the, the bottom of the hierarchy. So next we have, um, well, not the bottom, actually avoiding was the top, now, now the bottom, actually recycling. And we, we like to distinguish two types of recycling, open loop recycling, which means uh, recycling uh, cars into different kinds of products, different industries, and using materials from uh, recycled materials from other industries into the production of new cars, or closed loop recycling, uh, which is in this case uh, recycling end of life vehicles uh, to produce uh, vehicles again, or recycling end of life batteries to make batteries again, for instance. Uh, we consider it's uh, it's usually slightly higher in the hierarchy in the sense that. It's really circular. If you, if you are be able to make the same product once again out of the, the materials tried from the end of life product, you can do it uh, or, or again and again. So uh, you're really in a, in a circular uh, loop. Whereas um, the open loop is often assimilated to, to downcycling, meaning that you can, uh, it goes one way only, you can recycle some materials from cars into buildings, for instance, but maybe not 
the other way around. So next, higher on the hierarchy of recycling, we have remanufacturing and parts reuse. So a parts reuse is just taking parts from the end of fly vehicles and just reusing them as they are to repair uh, other cars that are still running or to keep them running. And remanufacturing, I, I will explain it a little further. It's basically an, an elaborated uh, advanced renovation or refurbishing. So next we have uh, the, the, ex life the extension of the lifespan of the cars which uh, also belongs to the waste avoidance principle. So we can do this once again by um, reconditioning the cars, so refurbishing, uh, retrofitting them, which consists of uh, replacing, so, so um, reusing the body, the, the, the whole structure of the car, but replacing the powertrain, usually replacing gasoline or diesel powertrain with electric. Then repair, of course, uh, is an essential part of uh, lifespan expansion. And second life, in case of EV battery, is a way to expand the life of the product, actually the battery, even beyond the life of the car uh, from which it, uh, it belongs. And finally, uh, the usage intensification is a way of increasing the um, enhancing the material efficiency of the way we use the cars themselves because in the traditional business uh, model of the the industry consisting of selling cars that will be privately owned they will be usually uh, used only a few percent uh, on average maybe five percent of the time they will be used the rest of the time they will be parked and during this 5% of the time, they will be used usually with one, most of the time with one passenger, only actually the driver. If you can see in, in cities, uh, especially uh, the commuters of uh, daily commuters with the car, usually they are alone in the car. So the, the efficiency, the usage, uh, use rates is very low, meaning that the materials that have been mobilized to, to, the, to produce the car are not used very efficiently for mobility. So this is for the principles. So basically we apply these principles uh, at different stages of the, of the life cycle, uh, from uh, the sourcing of materials to the end of life recycling. We, through different activities, different businesses uh, that you appear here on screen, but I, I will not uh, explain them here because I will be detailing them then uh, across the presentation. So, uh, yeah, I was asked to, to start this presentation uh, with, uh, well, after this introduction, with uh, an iconic project called Refactory, which uh, already covers uh, a series of these principles, principally, uh, mainly uh, around the reuse and, and, and uh, refurbish. Uh, um, principle. <clears throat> so refactory is a, well, it is a, a project, or now it's factory, but it was originally a, a project announced in 2020 by Renault Group, consisting in uh, converting a new vehicle assembly plant. So we could say a relatively iconic uh, plant of the, the, the linear industry while well, uh, using a huge amount of, of materials to produce new new cars. So to convert this, this plant into a circular economy, uh, well, a, a factory dedicated to, to the circular economy of mobility. So it's the, the first factory in Europe, probably in the world, as far as I know, that is really dedicated to, to, to the circular economy of mobility with a around four main axes that you can see here on screen. So we gave them a name, which is uh, just uh, like, uh, it's not exactly a technical name. For instance, here, retrofit uh, is, uh, it covers the activities of the refactory that, had, that, are, that consist of extending the lifespan, lifespan of the cars themselves. 
it's not only the retrofit itself, as I explained, I'll tell you further. Then we have green energy, which is uh, offering solution for the production, storage, and management of green energies. Then recycle, which actually is not so much about recycling materials, but rather extending the life cycle of the, the parts themselves. And finally, restart, which is aimed at promoting innovation, knowledge, and know-how in the circular economy of mobility. Um, the, the, this whole project ha has been launched with the objective to uh, hire, well, to, to, to have 3,000 employees by 2030. This would be more than the uh, initial number of, uh, of the workers that were employed to produce the new cars. So it's, uh, it's quite symbolic of the, the ability to that we, we, we have or we hope we will have to really uh, have the same number of jobs and volume of business with uh, circular activities based on, on uh, secondhand goods than we had originally in, in producing new cars in this factory. And another, another objective is to reach a net zero uh, carbon footprint for this plant uh, before 2030. So now when we detail more the, these, these various activities, we have, uh, so in this retro, so-called retrofit axis on uh, uh, about uh, lifespan, uh, vehicle lifespan extension, expansion, we have three main activities. We have two uh, large uh, car refurbishing and repair factories called Renew and Bodywork Factory uh, that I will show just uh, right after. And we have a brand new uh, light commercial vehicle retrofit activity that is starting this year at a pre-industrial scale. So like I said, retrofit consists of replacing the, the powertrain of a, a conventional car. So basically in this case, usually diesel engine uh, and, and uh, tank. Uh, so replaced by um, an e-motor and uh, an electric vehicle battery. And so instead of uh, scrapping the whole car and um, producing a, a, a brand new uh, electric van, then in this case, we, we convert the van because the point is that uh, many uh, professionals of the last mile delivery or professional, uh, well, of the, the plumbers or whatsoever that are working in, in urban environment are facing or will face in the near future um, zero emission zones that will not them end, let them get into the city centers with their uh, diesel uh, light commercial vehicle. So they, they will have two options. They will have, well, they would have had only the option of uh, replacing, scrapping their old car, their old van, and buying a, a new electric one. But this this is very expensive. They may have not have the, the, the budget to do this. Uh, and also, it may be a shame to scrap a, a good uh, diesel uh, light commercial vehicle. So here, the idea is to to keep the the van itself, especially uh, in some cases where you know this will work. The this work, uh, how do you say, craft works, craft craft workers. Uh, they 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 often have um, vans that are equipped with a special, uh, well, especially adapted to the activities. So they 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 are worth quite a, a lot of money and they are very precious to them. So it, it makes a lot of sense to, instead of scrapping them, to just replace the powertrain by electric so that they can keep, can keep you using it in city centers with a zero emission, a, a very low carbon footprint uh, and, um, and a, um, a lower budget than replacing the whole car. So now the uh, Renew Factory and Body Factory, these are the large, largest second-hand vehicle refurbishing and repair facilities in Europe. And the first that are doing it in industrial quality standards that are equivalent to that of new car assemblies. That, that's, uh, you can see here the scale of it. That's, that's really a factory, but dedicated to the refurbishing of second-hand vehicle. And next to this one, another one, the new one, called uh, Bodywork Factories, dedicated to repairing, actually, the, 
the, the cars, crashed vehicles, and uh, 16,000 cars have been refurbished last year, and the capacity is extended to 45,000 cars per year that could be refurbished or repaired from this year. So that's really a, a huge scale refurbishing. That's an industrial scale. It's uh, equivalent to a small uh, new vehicle assembly plant. Um, we have 150 operators uh, in this, uh, in the, well, actually 220, inc including the, the two factories. Uh, so a significant number of jobs. And it's, uh, it's of course, it's, it's refurbishing a lot of Renault cars or, or Renault Dacia, which are our, our main brands, but also it's can, uh, it is refurbishing actually any brand. It's open to any brand. It's not dedicated to our own brands. So next, next is the Renogy activities. So uh, like I said, offering solutions for the production, storage, and management of green energy. So that includes battery-related, well, EV battery-related activities <clears throat> and hydrogen-related activities. So I will not detail hydrogen activities, except that it's a joint venture we have with the American uh, hydrogen uh, and fuel cell specialist uh, power uh, um, flip power, sorry. And we are assembling fuel cells of their technology in, in this plant. I forgot to mention this plant is located in Paris region. It's, it was a historical, it's the oldest Renault plant so far, dates back to the, the 1950s. And um, then battery related activities. We have a uh, uh, Stationary storage system based on uh, on uh, on EV batteries. I'll tell you a little more about it later. But particularly, uh, besides hydrogen, we have a battery a workshop, a battery diagnosis and repair workshop, in which uh, it's uh, we have actually thirty uh, workshops of this type uh, across uh, the world, twenty across Europe. But uh, this is the main one and the one that develops that uh, the diagnosis and repair methods for the other ones. <laughs> it has repaired already 15,000 EV batteries so far. And it, it will gradually ramp up to uh, approximately 20,000 batteries repaired per year by 2030. Well, that's well, uh, what we expect. And uh, it is not only uh, repairing batteries, it is also actually disassembling them and uh, reassembling <coughs> the modules when, when the, bat the battery itself is not good enough to be, uh, to be reused for into a car, sorry. When it does not, uh, when it does not work as a whole, so some modules are, our components are faulty, but some are good. Or when it, uh, it does not provide enough driving range to use in the car, then it will be dismantled. And the, the modules, so the components of the batteries, and not only the modules, but also power, the, the, the power electronics will be reused, reassembled uh, into a new system <coughs> that has been designed by the German startup called Batteries. So this is a my mobile uh, electricity energy storage system. It's called Better Pack. The the <clears throat> the whole system is called um, Bedgen. You can put uh, several. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> oh, I hope that will be. <coughs> that will get better. Anyway. Uh, yes, it's mobile uh, stationary storage system. It replaces uh, diesel generators. So instead, uh, when you need uh, power in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you don't have a plug. Instead of uh, using a diesel generator for a concert, for uh, a tra food truck, for uh, works in the in the whatever environment. Instead of using diesel generator, this can be used instead. So you, you charge it and then it delivers the, the power anyway. And it's produced with a very and extremely low carbon footprint because it's mainly produced with a second, um, with reused components from our second life uh, EV batteries. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and, and there are other second life application that will say a little more about it. Then we have this recycle uh, activities, but it's not actually recycle, it's more like uh, refurbishing actually. It's about remanufacturing of mechanical and electronic components. <laughs> and <clears throat> next year we should have an end of life vehicle dismantling line that will produce uh, reused parts for for um, for the repair workshops. <clears throat> so this remanufacturing activity is our history. Actually, it's our oldest circular economy activity, <clears throat> date back to 1949, and it's uh, it consists of um, really well as 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 its name <laughs> indicates, remanufacturing. So. Basically, we get the faulty um, engines, gearboxes, or the components you can see here on the left, get them back from our after-sales network. They are replaced in the car of our clients. <clears throat> and then we get them back, they are dismantled, the, all the parts are analyzed. Uh, the good ones are, um, uh, are kept, they are cleaned by industrial systems and reassembled uh, along with uh, new parts, new components, to to make uh, uh, a nice new engine, a gearbox, etc., which is a mix of new new parts and and old parts that have been uh, uh, clean, <clears throat> and this is controlled and and basically it has the same performance, same quality warranties uh, of the the new one, but uh, of course with the uh, strongly reduced uh, environmental footprint, also significantly re reduced price, so around 40% cheaper on average than the, the, the new engine or the box or whatever. So on the left, these are the components that we are doing now in the refactory, in our own re remanufacturing plant. More are being made uh, by third parties. So we have made many mechanical parts for uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. We also have some infotainment uh, systems here in the bottom. But then, you know, the, the, you see the future on the right is really <clears throat> to um, develop the EV or hybrid components uh, remanufacturing, also multimedia media systems or chassis components. So next. Now, the, um, <clears throat> this hub called Restart includes an industry innovation center, which includes a workshop that retrofits industrial robots, so the production tool itself, 3D printing as well, that will, uh, well, it's making uh, uh, parts for the, the, the maintenance of our machines, but also it will, uh, from the, the new Renault 5, we'll have a 3D printing of accessories for the car without waste. Uh, with a uh, high level of customization and uh, low footprint. We have Circular Economy Campus. It's dedicated to professional training, academic education around circular economy of, uh, of mobility, but it's open to, to, to any company that wants to, to train its, uh, their, their employees to, to the circular economy, to the decarbonization, this kind of uh, topics. And we have an open innovation hub, which is a startups incubator, that incubator, that had has its second uh, second wave of startup uh, currently. <clears throat> so this is the the campus. I'm not coming into details, but just just for information. So that's for the that's all for refactory. Now uh, we have another branch, actually a new holding dedicated to the circular economy which is called the future is neutral. So it's been, uh, it's based on some of our historical um, circular activities uh, such as uh, end of life vehicle recycling. And it's, uh, it's, it's been created by Renault, but actually it's not aimed at uh, working only for Renault. It's dedicated to, to, to provide circular economy solutions for the, the whole automotive industry. So we call it the, the first 360 degree circular economy enterprise in the automotive world. So it's called the future is neutral, not so much in the sense of carbon neutrality, it's more in the sense of heading towards um, 
being neutral in terms of material so so uh, not depending of on on um, mining uh so it, it covers uh, various uh businesses various uh, subsidiaries one is indra it's the the leading end of life vehicle dismantling network in france with more than 350 dismantling centers uh, in the network uh, and so it is um, handling end-of-life vehicles from all brands and um, producing uh, second-hand parts that can be used in our after-sales networks or in, in our other after-sales networks, basically second-hand parts of any brand, also uh, batteries, so starter batteries, EV batteries, and materials for closed loop recycling. And these materials handle to Gaia, you know, the, the second part here, which is, uh, we call them the, the Swiss army knife of the circular economy, because this is a small, it's a small uh, uh, enterprise, a small subsidiary that is very agile and that we use to develop uh, breakthroughs or innovative uh, business models. And uh, one of them is um, one of their main activities is the closed loop recycling of materials, especially from end of life vehicles. I'll tell you a little more about it. Then we have Bon Comino Metal Impacts, <clears throat> dedicated to the, the trading and recycling of metal, metallic scrap from uh, uh, industrial plants, mainly automotive plants. It's a, it's a joint venture with Suez, waste management company. In by the way, is also a joint venture. And finally, uh, Future is Neutral is developing with partners some uh, battery recycling activities with, uh, in order to, to be able to recycle cobalt, nickel, lithium from end of life, from end of life batteries in a closed loop and reuse them in new batteries. Uh, they, also have, uh, they will also have uh, the, 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 the manufacturing, remanufacturing activity. So the, the principle, the, the starting point is the following, that 85% uh, of the vehicles are recycled. That's the legislation in, in Europe for, for almost 10 years. But, uh, and it's the case in most of the world, or in, if not in, in the whole world, actually, practically uh, in around 85% of the cars, of the mass of the cars are recyclable, but less than 30%, Sometimes less than twenty percent of the the materials, uh, um, of which the the cars are made, are uh, can come from recycling, uh, and much less than that come from the recycling of cars. Actually, uh, so um, actually the the concept is, uh, I mean, the the whole idea is to um, help the industry produce cars from the materials of the old ones. So for instance, uh, there are uh, 11 million vehicles coming to the end, uh, reaching end of life in Europe yearly, actually, well, unfortunately, only 6 million are officially recycled in Europe. Some are dismantled illegally, exported more or less legally or not. But basically 11 million are reaching end of life <clears throat> every year. And if they were uh, recycled, uh, and if the, the materials, uh, well, they are recycled, but if the materials were used, reused to produce new cars, we, they, could, they would represent uh, uh, the equivalent of uh, 8 million vehicles of, of steel, of, of 5 million in terms of plastics of, of copper. <laughs> so currently, uh, this, um, well, the future is neutral have uh, has uh, already recycling uh, activities of various types of materials that you can see here on screen. And they have recycled already 14 million tons of, of steel from production scrap with bone common or metal impacts, 12,000 12, tons of plastics and copper from end of life vehicles, uh, 1 million catalyst, catalytic converters with platinum, palladium, palladium, rhodium from end of life vehicles. So that's uh, the equivalent of, equivalent of one year production of uh, uh, 
here for steel, but uh, of, of one, one year equi industry equi equivalent of steel production by car industry in Europe, of uh, one year industry equivalent of, uh, equivalent of Renault Megane production for plastics in case of plastics, or one million uh, of the, the volumes of uh, platinum group metals we need for, for the production of our Dacia brand for the main, our main, main six uh, markets in Europe. <clears throat> The principle is following. We have in RA, like I said, uh, this uh, network of more than 350 um, dismantling uh, centers uh, in, in, in France. And they dismantle the vehicles. So this is, they take some parts that will be used, but then they also extract some materials. So copper wirings, uh, catalytic converters, and bumpers. Then, then they are handed to Gaia, and Gaia works with recycling partners. They, they don't have their own recycling facilities. They work with recycling partners to have these materials recycled uh, and um, taken back at the, the, the specifications of the car industry so they can be reused in our own plants or in the supply chain. And this will be offered also to, to other car makers. And as an example, in case of uh, of uh, platinum group metal. So by well, I, by 2035, there may not be any more new uh, combustion engine uh, vehicles uh, sold in Europe, but there will be electric or hydrogen vehicles. And for instance, by recycling three diesel light commercial vehicles while recycling their catalytic converters, we will be able to produce one fuel cell. So with the platinum from these uh, catalytic converters, for uh, one light commercial vehicle, uh, hydrogen commercial vehicle. And currently we are already, uh, we are using these metals to, to put them back into catalytic converters, the, the bumpers to make, uh, not necessarily bumpers, but uh, plastic parts from cars and the, the copper ride rings also are coming back into the loop. And uh, of course, the objective is to significantly expand, expand those, those numbers. You can see that the, the, the objectives for 2030 here on screen, I'll not, uh, make, uh, not comment them in, in details. So next is circular IV battery life cycle. So like I said, the battery uh, life cycle is not, uh, I mean, EV battery life cycle is not limited to like uh, first life on the product and then recycling. <laughs> you can have uh, a second life in other products or in other applications out of the car, out of the automotive uh, industry. Uh, and so it, we, we have this cycle, which involves different activities of the group. We have the first life where what that we we try to expand with, uh, like I, I showed you, the repair workshop. We have our after-sales network. Of course, we try to optimize durability, repairability of the of the of the batteries, which are pretty good so far. Then we have Mobilize. It's a new brand, so I'll show you a bit later in the end of the presentation that their uh, new mobility services. Uh, but they also have the second life battery business. So I showed you a couple of examples. I'll show you uh, some more. And finally, we have the closed loop recycling. So it's coming in the very near future. So like I said, Futures Natural is developing these activities. So we'll be able at the very end of the life of the battery when it's not worth, not good anymore to be reused in, in, in the car or in other applications can be recycled and then the materials, active materials can be recycled uh, in closed loop and reused for the production of new batteries. But then a little more about Second Life. I showed you this example you see here, developed with these German startup batteries and assembled in Fly in France out of uh, Second Life modules, but there are plenty of other applications. You can have um, stationary systems that will support the, the charging of e electric vehicles with uh, solar energy, because you know you cannot just directly uh, charge a vehicle with solar energy. You, you have to use the battery so that it can deliver the required power uh, and, and voltage. So this is the, the kind of thing you can do with second life EV batteries. 
also there are, we can we have this kind of big stationary storage system we have uh, this 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 uh, one uh, the container you see here is full of batteries from the Zoe it's in fact actually we have a series of containers like this we have various sim system like this in in uh, in several plants and it's delivering grid services meaning that basically it's helping the the energy the the, the power grid management company to adapt uh, offer and um, I mean the production and demand of electricity basically uh, instead we know for instance in winter uh, by the end of the day when everyone is getting back home and putting you know the the heating and electric uh, apparatus and all uh, then uh, instead of uh, starting a uh, thermal power plant based on 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 gas uh, on natural gas or coal, you can just have uh, deliver. Well, we can do this with these containers. Deliver the energy uh, from the batteries into the grid, and 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 then during the night when the, the production is higher than the demand in the network, then the batteries will be charged usually with low carbon electricity. And in this case, we can have second life batteries that were taken from the car that, uh, yeah, well, for various reasons. Uh, but we can have also uh, batteries, well, it's uh, after sales batteries that are that were new when we put them here, they are stored for the, so that we will be able to replace the batteries of our clients in the next, next 10 or 15 years. So we have this uh, stock of batteries, but instead of just storing them like this, we use them, we make them work. And actually uh, it's good for them to have this little gym, you know, daily gym to, to keep in, in good health. It's not, it's not, uh, they, 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 they will not be used prematurely. It's just, just keeping them in good condition. <clears throat> and we have also very interesting collaboration to, 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 Electrify boats like this beautiful sailing boat that is being built by a French startup called Neoline that uh, could replace some uh, um, container ships and plenty of other second life applications. So then uh, also, well, I showed you closed loop recycling. Uh, I talked uh, initially about open loop recycling. So. Uh, we are striving to to incorporate a, a rising, uh, an increasing amount of recycling materials into our cars, <clears throat> with the objective to have uh, thirty three percent of materials coming from the circular economy in our cars in our new vehicles by by twenty thirty, and um, this includes materials coming from cars or from basically. Uh, any industry yeah, that could come from from other sectors as well. So, for instance, the, um, the new Scenic uh, Electric the, that we are launching now incorporates over 18% of recycled materials, 24% of materials from the, the circular economy. Actually, the difference is just that the, the ISO definition of the recycled materials that we take here for the 18%, it's, it's include, it excludes the materials that are recycled intern internally within a, an industrial plant, for instance, a steel maker is recycling their own scrap. So it's, it's excluded from the 18%, but we account it here in 24%. And uh, also we have over 40 kilograms of recycled plastics in this cars. That's 70% of the overall amount of recycled plastics. That uh, may not seem so much, but actually that's uh, Really, really high in the industry. That that, that in, in this segment, that there's no, as far as I know, there's no equivalent. Uh, Thirty-seven percent of the steel is uh, comes from circular economy. Forty percent of aluminum, and for first time, we have um, external body parts made of uh, twenty-five percent of recycled plastic polypropylene. Because until recently, we've been using, we were using recycled plastics only for hidden parts, because we could not have the right properties, the right uh, appearance to use them in visible parts, but recycling is progressing. And then with uh, some partners, now, now we can have some high quality recycling materials that we can use in visible parts, whether outside or inside of the car. 
And here, this is our first example in by external body parts. And then in, inside the car, we also have plenty of sustainable and recycled materials. I have the list here, for instance, dashboard structure has 80% uh, uh, recycled polypropylene structure. It has some biosourced material uh, for the cover. We have carpets that are, are made of 99% uh, recycled materials. Also, the textiles from the seat are between 79% uh, and 100% uh, uh, recycled. And the same for the, the new uh, Renault 5. That also we've announced it will be uh, launched commercially in September, but still it was presented the, the final, the definitive version, commercial version was pre is being presented or was presented last week in Geneva. <laughs> also incorporates 90% of recycled materials, 26% of materials from circular economy. Also uh, over 40 kilograms of plastics, but since the car is smaller, that represents 20% of the whole amount um, of plastics in the car. That's uh, There's no equivalent, uh, basically, as far as I know, in the market. Like I, I said a bit earlier, we'll have also 3D printed accessories, highly customizable, made in refactory, uh, without waste, no mold, and low CO2. And also the interior also will also have recycled, 100% recycled fabrics for the seats, for doors, headliners, instrument panel, also 80% recycled flooring. And finally, uh, Mobilize. Mobilize is a new brand that you may know, not know. It's uh, not known. Uh, actually, uh, like I said, it, it has the second life uh, battery business, but also it's, um, it's developing uh, new mobility services based on uh, purpose design vehicles. Uh, and the first ones the, of these purpose designed vehicles that will be launched under the mobilized brand as a, as a new brand of Renault Group are the, the Duo and Bento. Maybe some of you know the Twizy. Twizy is very uh, is a small two seater electric um, vehicle. It's not a car. It's a quad recycle. So this will be the Duo is the next generation. It's a uh, it said will be uh, much improved because it's closed. The, the trees is open, so it's not very convenient if it's uh, if it's raining. This one will be closed, uh, so it can be used in any condition. Uh, it will uh, have so we're targeting around forty percent recycled materials. We say fifty percent, except what well, if you exclude the battery. Um, it will be assembled in a low carbon plant that has. Uh, uh, Boiler, or which uh, the, the heating is based off is uh, on the biomass, mainly uh, olive pips and or olive uh, green, uh, olive, well, olive, olive waste basically. Um, and it will be uh, marketed, it will be put on the market. It, it can be sold. Initially, it, it was not intended to be sold, but finally. Uh, we leave it open for the client if they want to to to, to buy it, but it will be also uh, mainly proposed as a as a mobility as a service for so you can use it by the hour, the minute, uh, or have a subscription to to have it a, a short term uh, rental um, maintenance included. So that's also the a way of. Um, of including the, the circular design in the sense that uh, since the maintenance is included, you, you ha we have to make a very reliable vehicle because uh, any maintenance cost will be uh, on, uh, will fall upon us. On, upon us. And then this is the last mine delivery version. So for, so it's, uh, it's uh, some intermediate between, you know, a Kangoo, like a small uh, utility vehicle or or, or these uh, these bikes you see for or, or scooters, so it's uh, yeah intermediate level but very agile, also safe and electric. And you see, it's uh, why do I do I present that that in this circular economy presentation? Because of course I told you the standard business model of the industry is not very efficient. We have big cars that are usually 
usually used with uh, one or two people inside very little part of the time. So this is basically a much more circular way of mobility. It's uh, basically the business model is circular in the sense that it's a shared business model of a service-based business model. And uh, also the vehicles themselves, they are, they are purpose designed. They are made for mainly urban use. So they are adapted for urban use when there will be usually one, one or two people inside or one people plus small some packages, some 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 parcels to deliver. And you see it also occupies, well, so that's a lot, much less material. It's uh, around 500 kilograms, which is uh, about three times less than a, a medium-sized or even relatively small electric vehicle. And also it, it's you can park three of them in one parking, parking space or instead of one vehicle. And um, it's highly durable and repairable, 95% recyclable. And um, yeah, I think I, I, told it, uh, I told it all and it will be out, uh, it will be launched uh, within, uh, I think a couple, two or three months as far as I know. And that's all for my presentation. Now time, time for the, the Q&A session. Thank you for your attention.